All right, here was my plan for today. Uh, plan for today was to do something similar to what we did last time, and that is to give you an opportunity to share progress that you made, something that you have done that you think others could benefit from hearing about, and so on. And um, <coughs> after we do that, um, issues that you're running into, sticking points, something that you're running into that you're not sure of, and so on. Um, and uh, so let's start with that. Any, any victories, any things that you, and I know it's only been a couple days, but, and if we don't fill the time, I have a, a new application that we're going to look at. I haven't seen anything. I haven't done much since Tuesday. Right. Now. Yeah, it's only been a couple days. Yeah. I, I, were you going to open up the floor to the screen? Sure. I, I'd love to show you guys what I did. I have some questions, some sticky points. Okay. All right, sure. Uh, do you want to do that now, or do you have something that you want to share, Jeff? How you're, oh, your bots. Oh, I love that. Um, let's, you got, you have, you both have laptops, right? Yeah. All right, excellent. Let's, this is the one that you plug in. I don't know what, can I? I don't think I can. Nope, is it, that's not an HDMI. Is it, is it a 9 or 11 bit, whatever? Uh, this is, yeah. But I do have this, if you have that. Uh, is that a micro HDR? That is um, what they call lightning wire or fire wire or some uh, such yeah. thing. Okay. Do you want to send it to me? Sure. And then you can use you can use uh, this. Do you guys mind being recorded? No. Okay. That was the other thing. Uh, no, you could, this is just a regular, what would be, RGB, no, that's, that's the name of the company. I don't know, this is a regular plug-in. Yeah, pins. Yeah, pins. Do you have something that would fit this? This adapter. If not, you can mail it to me. Email it to me. Let me know when it's when it's mailed. Okay, that sounds good. Emailed or? Uh, in, in Canvas email. Okay. This will be a good test on how it works on another device, too. There you go. Usually what I have to do is, what do I have to do? I have 
do. You want it on a tablet, or let's put it on a tablet. the application I was working on earlier. I think my impatience is Using, uh, or the touch. Uh, touch pad. Oh, ah, so I get to enjoy the uh, 
Okay, so... Do this... you want me to work the mouse? Um, can I f try to fumble through? Oh, sure, absolutely. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm choking. So, uh, the basic idea was to set up a 4x4 four four grid. Um, for now, it's static. Um, eventually, I want to make that dynamic. I haven't started that yet. All right. um, I also have the cards in order just for testing. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you touch? Just tap? Just tap. There's a bug. Um, okay. Do you mind if I run that again? No, go for it. Okay. So I started off um, with nothing in it. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one of my questions. Uh, I've already created dynamically all eight views here on the onCreate. I don't necessarily want to do that. I'm going to leave it for now. Um, I want to plan ahead for making that dynamic, so I don't think that should be uh, done in the onCreate because I'm going to have some preferences maybe I want, or a settings I want to send in. Right. Um, and that was my first question. Um, where, how do I move the layout inflator, inflator around? Okay, so there's one card, there's the other card, disappears, great. There's one card, there's the next card, oh, they don't match, awesome. Um, you could go through the whole thing. Um, just for testing, I wanted to see how the behavior of the play game button worked. Right. Because before... Um, I didn't realize there was a physical down touch. I was just tapping it. Okay. There's actually a click on it. That's cool. Okay. Um, so I was running into a bug after all the cards were gone. I've got a basic score at the bottom just to have something there. I don't know what I'm going to do there eventually. Okay. Um, so hey, out of the I have the I haven't shuffled the deck. I'm using the same deck on a retry. Mm -hmm. um, that was my test to make sure that hey, I'm getting more cards. I don't know if you remember the first two. They weren't aces. Right, they were the threes, I think. Um, so, oops, that's not what I want. In the Java, is it one click or two? Double click. Right. It, it's funny. It, it's like you ask me these, I really have to think. Because <laughs> like, I just like don't know. It's even like that. It, it's like, yeah, it is a tap, but you're right. It's a physical tap. Um. So in my main activity fragment, I won't go through the hierarchy. Right, right. Um, I'm getting that. I have not started a settings only because I was a little intimidated by the hierarchy or the structure, but right. I think I'm getting an idea okay. on how that. So I initialize my variables. Um, uh, let me get down to the on create. So here's the on create with the layout inflator. I want to move that onto an um, on initialize function, which I have started. Um, I'm just not sure what to do with the code, all these parameters in here. Do I do I just move them down to? I'll just show you real quick where it is. Oh, well, this is an old version. That's interesting. My bad. Oh. Well, okay. So here's the initialized game. That's the, um, like it's called on the button click. Okay. Um, that's then going to, first thing I needed to do was make sure that it wasn't a previous game because my cards were, Right. it was error in here. Um, I've got my views. Here's where we do the dynamic uh, creation of the views. I had to set them back to visible here on the second time through. Right. Um, 
what I want to do is I want to set those listeners like right here somewhere on the initialize game. Okay. Do I need to add a bunch of things? Just move that code into here, into those parentheses? So let, let me make sure I understand the question. Okay. Scroll up to the on create. All right, Andre, if you scroll up a little higher. Okay, so. So that's in, what is that in? Main activity frame. Okay, main activity frame. Okay, so that, that's what gets called when it creates the fragment. It creates a view for it. And you want to move it to an initialize. Mm -hmm. because you want to be able to refresh it or how does it display now? how does it redisplay now when you play a second game when you click that button what does it do uh, it, it doesn't go back to on create it goes to initialize so those views are, are already listening. Okay. But I don't want them to be listening on the create because I think that gets me stuck if I want to make them dynamic. So here's a, even though this is hard coded, this right, is the right, right. creating the, the, the. That's creating the image views. The views. And then let, let's see the initialize again. Sure. And initialize clears all the cards so that that deletes all the cards. I would. I think um, yeah. the array list was ending up empty. Okay. And that was causing the app to crash. Okay. Gotcha. So. so you have a view, your image views, your image views 16. Oh, you're just right now. You're just assigning. Right now, you're just making it visible. Right. Okay. Let me. This, I'm sorry, this is a version behind, so... I'm, no, that's okay. Uh, here's, here's the listener getting set. Right. Um, I'm saying that backwards. I want to create the views mm -hmm. in my initialize. Right. That's why it was confusing. I apologize. So you, you right now you're creating the views here. I'm creating the views the on, create. on the on create. And you're not, you're not associating the click listener. Correct. So you're associating the click listener in the initialize. Yeah, I might just answer my okay. own question. Okay, so, so yeah. I, I think I, I'm I would, okay. <laughs> yeah, I would think, I just wanted to get a grip of what it was doing. Yeah. I, it seems like you just need to move, get rid of those those add image views. Okay. Um, I would think you would need to do this. What's in your fragment main? Your fragment main has hard... So that's, I think I was getting a, a syntax error. I, I'll have to go back and relook right. at this. Um, when I tried to move the views down, I, might, I think I fixed it. I, I, sorry about that. So here are my, my static um, views, okay. image 2 through 16. Okay. Um, I put them in four rows. Now, now how do you see, how do you see, what do you, what do you see the options are? Because you, are the options... I guess there are two, like so. There'll be a max cells, maybe. Okay. You know, so it's right now it's a four by four. Maybe we right. might. I'll just because I'm the game designer, I'll make it a four by ten or or not even that many, four by eight or four by six. Okay. I could do up to four by six. Would there elements. always be in rows of four? I think for now, yes. Okay. And I think what I want to do is create the fragment main XML dynamically through Android Java code.
maybe, okay. but I haven't researched that yet. Is that an approach? Uh, that that is. Um, here's let me give my suggestion, and you can give your thoughts on it. Here's here's what I would do. I would have, and you can feel free feel free to. I'm sure there's other approaches you could take. Right now you have a fragment main.xml, right? Mm -hmm. And that contains 16 image views. All right? Right. I would get rid of those from here. I would have a fragment row dot XML that contains a linear layout that's oriented horizontally that has four image views in it. Okay. I do have linear layouts in the main fragment. Right. I hear what you're saying. Right. So in other words, this is going to represent, you You have four, four linear layouts, yes. each of which has four views in it. Yes. All right, so I would have a linear layout with four image views in it. get rid of this. Yeah. All right? So I get rid of all that. I would then have in your initialize, so I get rid of that. So I'm still inflating your fragment main XML. It's just that there's like nothing in it or less in it. All right? I would then have on your initialize a variable for number of rows that you eventually are going to pull from shared preferences. Now you can hard code it at four or whatever. And then I would loop for i equals zero, i less than rows, i plus plus. Each time through, I would inflate the row. All right? Create a new view, inflate the row. That row is going to give you a linear layout. That's the view that it's going to give you. So my view is going to be a linear layout. So make these image. Zero, image, one, image, two, image, three. And then, as you, after you inflated it, find within that view that got inflated, find by ID image zero, image one, image two, image three. Associate the, and you can put this in a loop if you wanted to, or you can hard code it because you know there's always going to be four. And then add each view zero through three to the array list, set listener. for each one. Get a card and add 
to card array list. Does that make sense? It does. That is certainly making it more efficient. I'll have to think about how to yeah. smoosh it down and do all that. Eventually, you could have you could have code to just create a single image view if you didn't want to like have the restriction of it's building in rows of fours. Right. Building in rows of fours is fine for me. Sure, sure. I think you know in good developing programming practices that would also be dynamic. But right. Exactly. Um, that's exactly. Not to a customer, so. Yeah, and you know the thing is, is that you know it's one of those things that like you know, um, you know I, I I try to balance the theoretical best programming practices with practical concerns. If you downloaded this game and it told you that you could only uh, uh, choose the settings were rows of fours, it'd be like, okay. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't think twice about that. You wouldn't say, well, I want a memory game with 22 options, not 25. You know, no one's going to, you know. So practically, that's not going to matter much. Any thoughts that you have on how you would do this? That's pretty close to what I did. Okay. okay. All right. Good. I'll just take it the <clears throat> next few steps and see if I can figure okay. out the syntax for all of that. All right. Sounds good. Looks great, by the way. The, the mechanism, uh, you know, um, that's a great idea for in your initial testing to stack the deck, <laughs> you know, if you will, to put the ones next to each other. Because that way you don't have to worry about actually testing <laughs> your memory while you're doing this. And you can do it efficiently and all that. I guess the score... Uh, you know, the score in my mind would be a combination of how many pairs there were and how many clicks. So, like, if you got eight out of eight, if it took you eight clicks to get eight pairs, that's like optimum, 100%, which shows you not necessarily having the best memory, but being the luckiest per person on earth, right? If it took you 16 clicks, then you were 50% efficient. And if it took you 24, then you were one third efficient, and so on. I think that's what I meant by it does stuff. Right. I'm just not sure I'm scoring. That, that would be kind of how I would think of scoring, and somehow turn that into a number, you know, and where 1,000 is the absolute maximum, but no one's ever going to achieve that. And just look at how many clicks it takes you to get the eight pairs, mm -hmm. and, and maybe do some heuristics of like, um, run through it and see what you think a good score is for you, you know, um, you know, and, and get like a benchmark for an average and maybe make that the average or something like that. Do you want to review this some more or are you set? No, I, I, I okay, excellent. The time. That, that'll keep me going. Um, yeah, next, I think what I'll start on next week is maybe just putting a static preferences section just maybe right. for the board. Just right. Replacement. Sounds good. Now, you submitted it? Okay. All right, so let's go and download it. Good job. Okay, so this is lab 11. Canvas, you ha you can't click on the file. You have to click on the little arrow to download it. I have wasted probably three days of time this semester <laughs> clicking on the file name instead of the little arrow, which makes sense because if it's like almost all my submissions are zip files, but if your submissions are Word documents, the click brings it up and allows you to preview it. Yeah, so I mean, I, I guess I, it makes sense for people that don't use zip files.
Okay, concentration. Do you want to come up and demonstrate, or do you want me to work it? Okay. If you don't want to choose play bot, I don't know. Okay, play bot. But what I would do is I would change some options. Okay. Probably. Um, you choose your bot. Choose a bot. Baby bot is going to be purely guessing, right? Okay. And the Brainiac bot is actually a more interesting than it was. So that would be the, deep, the deepest search. Okay. So it's probably more interesting if you just... Okay. And the cards you can change might I would stick with twelve because it's okay. faster. Right. Okay, so a number of cards all twelve. As you say the face of the cards are better on some of the other ones. Okay. And game yes. options. Now that yeah, I prefer the other option where it's not required to match, but that's up to you. Okay. So I'll turn that off. And decks. Okay. So. Okay. All right. So, new game or does it automatically reset? It's good. Yeah, okay. So, nine and jack. Ten and eight. Matched, I think. <laughs> well, got lucky. Oh, crap. See, the thing is, is it, is, it is beatable. I didn't give it yeah. any memory. Right. So once it clears some cards, it doesn't have any to remember. But once it's memories. <laughs> Oh, we saw a queen before, yeah, didn't we? Yeah. This one? I, you know, I can't hardly see your cards to tell you the truth. That okay. Right the there we go. Right wow. I drew it. I consider that a victory. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that is awesome. <laughs> that is really good. Uh, There's a lot there, but I think I'd like to go over the memory aspect of it. Okay. Wow, that, I'm, that's like applause. <laughs> there's a few, there's like three things. That I Do you want to work, you want me to work the mouse, sir? Um, well, let me see how bad I am. It's a okay. physical click, you'll, you'll feel it. I'm not going to play the game, I'm just going to go over the... Okay. want to get to the, I just want to get to the code. How do I do that? That's up here. Yeah, okay. over there. Yeah. All right. So let me just orient it first from the main activity, I guess. Wow. <laughs> it's big. All right. So um, I probably want to go to the fragment. There's nothing there. So the main thing I want to focus on is the bot. Okay. So basically, when the user is done, like if he has no match, mm -hmm. you get to this code, then the bot takes a turn. Okay. So there's a one method. It's kind of interesting the way I developed it. At first, I just said, okay, let's develop the bot takes a turn method so that um, he just flips over two cards and quits. So literally just took one turn. And sorry, it's kind of hard. It's weird to looking all zoomed in, isn't it? I know, it is. It's like, where yeah. is everything? So 
somewhere, right? I'd almost be better off searching for it. Okay, I'm in the right, yeah, I'm in the fragment. So these are the different levels, we saw those. So just to point out, these are the search depths. Okay. So when I get to the memory, you'll see what I mean, but basically that's how much you can remember. Mm -hmm. So you can see, I, I, it isn't infinite, it, it's finite even for the mm -hmm. highest level. Um, where am I here? So this is where the users play. Okay, here we are, bot takes a turn. Okay, so after the user misses, then it calls this method. And basically, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to go to this memory, mm -hmm. which I'll get to. And he, there's a call in there to see if there's a matching pair. Okay. So that's the first thing he's going to try. If he doesn't get a matching pair, and so that's null, then oh, here's where he did find a matching pair. Right. Then he removes the cards, right? And then skips over this logic and you'll see where it continues. But if he doesn't get a matching pair, then he picks a random card, he flips it over, and then he there's a call to see, well, look, is there a match is there a match to mm -hmm. that in the memory? Right. And if there is, then he removes a card and then he's gonna continue. Otherwise at that point, you know, he's lost that and, and it turns over. So there's like a global flag that kinda tells whose turn it is. So right. But this this method will return, and the need the need for the flag is mostly, to, as you'll see, to keep the user from playing. It kind of s turns off the listener, so he can't click. Yeah, right. Gotcha. Okay. Now here's one of the things I found is if you ever want to do this, is you can't when we're we've been writing stuff that responds to the the GUI through the GUI thread and responds to the events and all that. Mm -hmm. But if you're writing code like this, it's just a separate method. It's not, it's not going to run on the GUI thread. You have to actually, to get it to, to turn things over and that, you do have to run it on the thread. So any code that you write, you know, outside of a handler, like an on, you know, on a listener or whatever, you want to make this kind of call. You want to call it on, on this, get the activity and call this method, and then implement your method inside of a, 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 it does this thing I hate. How do you uh, plus this? Inside this run method. So what, what happens is, is and this is true just in Java in general, is that your, the GUI runs on a single thread. And if, if you're running outside that thread, like with the robot logic, in order for it to get to the items on the GUI, it also has to run on that thread. So by doing this call here and putting the, the code that you want inside a run method, this will basically get dispatched on the GUI thread. If you don't do that, you, you wind into some access violations and it won't work right. But it's really just that simple. Just just do this, create create a new runnable, implement the run method. So, so like this flip card, for example, where you're actually touching the GUI, because you're writing this method that's outside of a, uh, like a, a normal event handler, that's how you have to do it. Gotcha. So then all of this, all of this stuff is done inside this run method. And you've seen this post-delayed stuff before. That's just to like slow things down because otherwise it'll flip it instantly. Right. But, so that's kind of like the, the how you do stuff. You know, how you flip the cards and stuff is you just, Make sure you run it on this guy, and then you can do whatever you want. But then the logic is uh, basically you flip a card, and I have the same logic you'll see in the handler for the user too, is whenever the user flips a card, I call this bot memory add to memory. And so the idea is, is that every card that you see, he sees, that gets added to his memory, right? And then this is just basically just he flips another card, adds it to the memory. Here he's just checking for a match. Do they match? If it's true, you know, he, he gets scores a point. And then he removes them from the game, right? So they also get removed from memory. So he won't look for those anymore. 
Otherwise, at some point, if he doesn't have a match, then he flips the cards over, and then this returns. But one other thing that's interesting about this is, is if he gets a match, and it's true, and he adds to his score, and he, re he removes these, then as he checks to see, look, is the game over? The number of matches you have, mm -hmm. Equal plus mine equal the number of cards. If if it is, the game's over. If not, this is kind of interesting. Um, if not game over. Let's just plus them again. It's a recursive call. It just calls ah, itself. Gotcha. <laughs> right, 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 right. So I was wondering, as I took this one step at a time. You know, at first I had it do one turn, right. and I got all the logic. I thought, damn, I have to do this a loop. Right. So let me just try calling itself. And it worked. So it actually made that pretty simple. Awesome. Now the memory is actually not can, too bad. Can you, uh, can you go back to that just for a second? Sure. And scroll down just a little bit? Yeah. OK. Um, what am I looking for? Uh, right, just scroll up just a little bit. Um, Where it says and cards remaining dot add card, add and then parentheses card card click list up. What is that doing? Okay, let me see. What this. So if there's a match, then bot takes a turn. Right. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna flip the cards back over. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And we put the cards back in a collection of cards that are left. Oh, so I keep a separate. This maybe not the cleanest thing, but I keep a separate collection of cards that are left mm -hmm. in the deck. Okay. There was some issue I had. So what I did was I created a hash table for just the remaining cards so you could quickly look up what was left in the game. That's what's left in the game, not what's left in the right. overall deck. Okay. Right. right. Okay. Yeah, that's what that is. Alright. Cool. Um, okay. So on to the bot? Yeah, the memory is probably the other thing that's interesting then. So the memory is a hash map where the card is the key because each card's unique. And then the value is actually just a number which is going to represent milliseconds of time. So there's a call that's made to the system where you can get the current time in milliseconds. Mm -hmm. So this is effectively a timestamp. So what happens is when you add a card to the memory, it gets the current time in milliseconds, and it puts that card in that map with, along with the timestamp. And the reason that you, that's useful is uh, I treat this just like a person's memory, like you can remember the most recently put in thing for mm -hmm. right? So to get the cards remembered, it uses a search depth, right? So if it's say, let's say it's six, there's a call to get the card sorted by, by uh, I can't read that, most recent first. And what that basically does is uh, it takes that collection and it's going to reverse sort it based on the timestamp. Okay. So you wind up with a list of, you know, the highest timestamps first. Right. So it's kind of like looking back in time, right? Right, 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 right. And so then the depth comes in play when you set the game up, which bot you're playing. Mm -hmm. It just tells it how far back it can look. Right. So, right, right. so adding and removing from a hash map is really easy because you know each card's unique and you can timestamp it every time, and and then searching it is a little harder, so you want to kind of put it in order before you do that. Right. Can so, you scroll, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. Can you scroll a little bit down? Sure. A little bit further down. Okay, you're returning a card list. Yeah. What is that? Well, so, this is like the, the role, you tell, this is used when you want to um, basically tell, tell them what I can look at. Okay. Uh, so if you oh, go, okay. if, if you're going to search it, let's go for a search. Find a matching card. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So you're going to oh, pass okay. a card in. This this will return it a list of things it remembers. Okay. And it's basically a sorted list, but it's based on the depth that it's allowed okay. to look. So in other words, you have you have your um, what you call it your your hash map mm -hmm. that um, remembers every card that's ever every card that's over. ever been played. Right. But this is then a subset of the n most recent yep. cards added to it. Based on the when, most recent right. first, and based on how deep you're allowed to look. And if you find a match, then? Well, they get removed from memory. That's that's the simplest solution that, that I can If you find with. a match, those two get removed from memory. Right. You you play that you you remove the cards from the game and you remove them from the memory. Okay. Now Let's say, let's say that we're remember three. What what are the what are the number of what are the number of depths? Depths, yeah. What are the possible well, depths? Well, that's up. You know, that's how you want two in the game. But I pick zero, two, four, six, and eight, or something okay. like that. So let's say that we're remembering four moves back. Right. All right. So we remember we we play six rounds, all right? So all six of those are in memory, are, yeah. are in its list of things. So it's its turn, mm -hmm. all right? It will go back and look among the four that it remembers, if it can find a pair. If the level is set at four. If the, let is set, if the level is set at four, right? right? So it'll, it'll pull the four things if the level is set at four. Yep. All right? So it finds a match. Yep. It deletes some. Yep. Now, number five and six become numbers three and four in that yeah, list? That's a good question. I, su I suspect you're right on that. Okay. There's right. there's probably lots of little gotchas on yeah, there. Yeah, I'm not even saying this is a gotcha. I mean, you've done such a great job on it. I, if I were to say anything, it would be so nitpicky right. that it's not even funny. But, I'm just trying to think through how this how this would how this works so, right. for my own understanding of yeah. it. The, the goal was to make it you know more intelligent, um, right. and it is. Right, right. But right. there's things like that that probably could be. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking how you could. You could do that instead of you know out the card, so it still had that position. Um, I, I don't know. I would have to think about yeah, it. Yeah, this know. is this is this is amazing. What I, I did was when I after I implemented, I just played it and let people play it, and I was pretty satisfied with the way it played. Yeah, and I said, I, you know what, I it, yeah. it met my objectives and right, other things right. in the world. You know? Well, again, believe me, it's, this is not a complaint. This is just something I was asking for my yeah. own understanding. No, I know there's because, there's things. There's yeah. another thing that I noticed was um, it's smart, but it isn't as smart as one thing it does do that doesn't make a lot of sense is like it remembers. Let's let's say it can remember four cards, right? Mm -hmm. And it looks and sees well. There's no no match. Uh, then it picks a random card, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't. It picks a random card from the whole set. It really should pick a random card from ones it hasn't turned over yet, because you know what I'm saying. Because if it if it remembers these four cards, yes, 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 yes. It makes more, but it doesn't do that. And I know that, but it's like yeah. it's playing well. Well, that know? that's that's the same thing. You know, I didn't even think of that, but. This is so far exceeds my expectation of what I wanted from this assignment that I well, can't I was, even. I was just happy that it worked, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but you're right. I mean, there's a lot you could do, I think, to make it. Um, to refine it. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Because yeah, this this isn't an AI class or anything. No. So uh, this is a this is a, a amazingly good job. This I is, thought that was pretty cool. The memory. Cool. Yeah. Intimidating. Even. Yeah. <laughs> the robot is intimidating. Yeah. I can the fact that I got a draw, I feel, I feel tickled. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, you know, I play a lot of, you know, this is, this is like, you know, this is a, a app store worthy app. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is. Yeah, it's funny. I was surprised that like lots of people playing. They all seem to enjoy it. So. Yeah, they're, they're, you know, I, it's like I swear I'm like thinking it's like I want to play this some more. You know. <laughs> 
Definitely, because you know, I want to try it in other settings and just see both from a perspective of, like you said, to kind of get a sense of the behavior, like how smart in the different settings, and just just because it's kind of fun, you know. So, wow, really good job. That's that's amazing. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Wow. What are you going to do for the next one where you have to make improvements? Uh, on it? Well, I, yeah, I'm going to just add name to it. Okay, there you go. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of have this down really well. I'm trying to hit the things that I want to learn. And right. I want to learn the right. things. So, right. So. Yeah, and, and again, you know, um, Steve, yours is very good as well. I mean, you, for what you did uh, in that, that that's, that's awesome. Because, I mean, it's virtually, you know, that's a workable, that's what I asked for today, you know, to do that. So, great job, both of you. It's fun to teach. <laughs> well, what, what do they say if you're the smartest one in the room, find another room? <laughs> well, they're, 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 they're the right room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's great. The, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, and, and it's funny because, uh, you know, I don't even know if I can take credit as a teacher. I mean, you guys just did a great job on this. You know, I mean, I have a feeling no matter who the teacher was, you'd do a great job on this. So, well, thank you. Thank you. Awesome job. All right. Um, I'm going to end the recording of this and uh, shame the people that missed this. Um, and uh, any other questions for me?